audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. John went to church one day. As the congregation worshipped, he thought to himself, why does the music need to be so loud? When the congregation was seated, he noticed two teenagers chatting together and he remarked to himself, so typical of young people today, no respect for God or anyone. Then when the pastor announced that they would be taking up a second offering in the service, John said to himself, money, 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 all the church wants is your money. As he left the church that morning, he mumbled to himself, never again, I'm not going back to that church. Jeremy went to church one day. During the time of worship, he smiled as the song the congregation sang reflected so well the love that was in his heart towards God. He couldn't help noticing a row of teenagers in front of him and was thankful that his church was reaching the youth of the community. He was also glad when they took up an extra offering that morning to help sink a well in a remote village in Central Africa. After the service, Jeremy said to himself, what a great meeting, I can't wait for next Sunday. John and Jeremy both went to the same church on the same day. Why did both men respond to the same situation in a completely different way? Well, everything we do in this life is a result of that which is in our hearts. That's why the Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Hello and welcome to Set Free with Ken Legg and Phil's my name. And this week we're looking at the subject of guarding your heart. What does that actually mean? And a good example just there, it's really interesting that two people can be in the same place going through the same thing, yet respond completely differently. And Ken, as you say, it's because each is living out that which is in their heart. Yes, you know, no one is able to live beyond the level of that which is in their heart. So whatever is happening right now in my life and in your life is basically an overflow of that which is in our hearts. That's why we are exhorted in the Bible to keep our hearts, you know, with all diligence, because out of it, the Bible says, are the issue of life. In other words, our whole life flows out of what's in our heart. Mm. A good place to start then is probably what does heart actually mean? What's the definition? All right, well, let's give a couple of definitions here. Uh, First of all, the Hebrew word for heart is the word leb, L-E-B. And that means the midst or the inner part, the center or the middle of a thing. So the heart is the inner being, if you like, which controls everything we do. It's the real you. Now, the Bible speaks about the hidden man of the heart in contrast to the outer man, the part that we see. Mm. Now, let's just look at that um, and illustrate that for a moment. When God sent the prophet Samuel, you remember, to the house of Jesse Mm -hmm. to anoint one of his sons to replace Saul, Jesse lined up his seven oldest sons. And as Samuel was about to anoint the oldest, God prevented him. And he said this, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Now, maybe, uh, you know, he saw that in this man, he was no different to Saul in his heart. He was just going to do his own thing, just like Saul had. Mm. Uh, Then when the next son come along, you know, Samuel went to anoint him. Maybe God saw this man's heart that basically he was an idol worshiper and he was going to lead the whole nation into idol worship. Then the next son, maybe he saw that this man was a coward. In the day of battle, he wouldn't trust in the Lord. He'd just turn around and run, and everyone would run away. You know, So God looks at the heart. And the man, of course, that was uh, anointed was David, he, and he was described as being a man after God's own heart. Yeah, and God knew that. God knew what was in his heart and that he would live and lead out of that which was in his heart. He, in other words, he would, he would fulfill God's agenda. Mm. So what you're saying is that the heart is at the very center of our being, and that basically controls or it influences uh, the things that we do, what we choose, how we react, uh, behave, all of that sort of stuff. You're going to give two definitions. What's the other one? All right, let's just take a little bit of time here because some preachers and Bible commentators seem to confuse the word heart and soul. Now, of course, they're completely different words. Uh, the word heart is a translation of the word cardia, which we get the word cardiac, um, and the soul is a translation of the word suki. Um, now, of course, there's a, there's a relationship there in the, in the sense that the soul is comprised of three compartments, okay? The mind through which we think, mm-hmm. the emotions through which we feel, and the will through which we choose. Now, admittedly, the Bible does associate these at times with the heart. For example, it might refer to the thoughts of one's hearts or making the proper choices that we make 
with all our heart or loving others with all our heart. So you would think that that's okay, the components of the soul coming into play here. But, you know, the Bible talks about those things being, um, you know, the manifestations of the heart. Mm-hmm. Now, here's where the difference is, Phil. Whilst we encounter life through the three primary faculties of the soul, the mind, the emotions, and the will, the heart is the place where we store the most significant experiences of life. Now, you might say, well, what are the most significant experiences in life? The things that bring us the greatest pleasure and the things that bring us the greatest pain. Mm, and we all think of those things, you know, your, your wedding day or yeah. the day that you found out some really bad news or you were in a car crash or somebody else, those kinds of things, they stick in our exactly. mind. Exactly, they register. And they stick they in our register, heart. They register, they're recorded, they're, they're stored in the heart. In fact, Jesus called the heart a storehouse. Uh, the storehouse influences and it determines the way that we will live our lives today. You remember Jesus said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart will bring forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. So, you know, things have been stored up there. Now, the question is, what have we been storing Mm. in our heart? Uh, What are we storing there now? Every day our hearts are being programmed by what we choose to retain in our hearts from everything that's happening in our life. And our whole life flows out from our heart. Every response, reaction or decision and choice that we make is determined by whatever is predominant in our heart. Mm, and it really makes sense when you consider that the Bible has so much to say about the heart. And Jesus talked a lot about it, didn't he? He did. Um, in fact, you remember the parable he told about the sower and the seed. Uh, the seed, of course, fell into different types of soil. Yep. And the quality of seed was the same in every case, of course, the mm. same seed, but different soil. And what determined the ultimate outcome was the soil. Basically, that was a picture of different heart conditions. You know, for example, there was the wayside soil. Now, the wayside soil was actually a path that went through the cornfield. So it was compacted. You know, people mm. were constantly walking after uh, upon this particular soil. Pretty hard to get anything to grow in that. Exactly. And, and that was a picture of the hardened heart. You know, that's so many people's their hearts are hardened. They, it's hardened, for example, through pride. You know, Pharaoh's heart was hardened, uh, hardened through pride. Uh, some people have a hard heart because of bitterness. The things they've experienced in life it causes their heart to become hardened and resistant towards the truth. But I guess one of the things that hardens the heart most of all the Bible speaks about is unbelief. When we constantly look for reasons not to believe, we're actually hardening our heart mm. towards the Word of God. So that was one type of soil, and that's one kind of heart. Now, you remember the other soil, or the next soil, was the shallow soil or the stony ground. And uh, that's not like stone mixed in with soil. It's actually a layer of soil on top of a a, a slab of limestone or rock. So it's shallow. There's not much depth to it. And that represents, um, you know, those fair weather Christians. Uh, They've got faith in God as long as everything's going fine, you know, (laughs) Uh, as long as God's doing everything right and, you know, giving them everything they ask for, answering all their prayers the way they want them answered. But whenever there's a trial or there's a test, then if there's no depth there, their faith is also lacking, the shallow heart. And then, of course, there was the the soil that was uh, mixed in with thorns and thistles, and they choked the good seed. Now, uh, Jesus said that that's those who basically are caught up with the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches. In other words, there are some people that every decision that they make, Phil, it's governed by this controlling influence. How is this going to affect me economically? Mm. And, and that thing also can strangle faith, you know. Now, these are heart conditions. But thankfully, there was that fourth part where the seed fell into good ground and brought forth a good harvest. And that represents the heart that's receptive, that's fertile, that's open towards God and that's uh, mixed with faith, you know. And this week, we're looking at what it means to guard our hearts so we have that kind of uh, soil, if you like, in our heart. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're looking at why our hearts are the way they are. You know, what's in our heart? How did it get there? And what's God's way of dealing with it? That's what we're going to be looking at this week, Phil. Practical discussion on guarding our hearts. And we'll have more for you same time tomorrow. Until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg, including the book What's Eating You, which features topics from today's message, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision, 
www.abc.org.au. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.